so we're going to have everyone. First of all, we'd like to give them all a round of applause and thank them for being here. We're going to share the mic. I think we have two mics, so we're going to make it work. Well, Anthony will do the second row. I will do the first row, so you will pass it back and forth. So I'm going to start here with this young lady. So I'm going to say, please introduce yourself and tell us why you're running for re-election. All right. All right. It's a pleasure to be here with everyone. I am Anita Bonds, and I am an at-large member of the D.C. City Council, and I'm running for re-election because... I like working for the citizens of the District of Columbia. All right. Good evening. Uh, I'm Michael Brown, and uh, I'm one of your two United States Senators from the District of Columbia, and I'm running for re-election because we're getting really, really close, uh, mostly in, in thanks to the lady on the end of the road here, but we've got 207 co-sponsors on our bill to make us a state. All right. My name is Don Beyer. I'm the token Virginian on the panel. And I'm one of the 207 co-sponsors on that piece of legislation. I'm a native Washingtonian. My parents met at Western High School before it was Duke Ellington. And, uh, and I very proudly represent the, the near part of Northern Virginia. And I'm looking forward to Democrats taking back the House and being able to pass Passed some of the really good legislation that's been followed up all these years. Go. Yeah. Thank you, Racine. I appreciate this opportunity. It's a public service. I am very grateful to D.C. residents who have supported me so strongly as I have struggled to keep your gun laws. They go after them every year. Uh, and to, at the same time, get things for the district, like the WARF, my economic development projects, of which that is one, DC TAG, which is sending our students to college in all 50 states. This time, supporting me is even more important because we are, I'm not saying if we, when we take back the House of Representatives, <laughs> Then uh, we will we will be able to have a vote if it seems strategically smart on that DC statehood bill, and we will no longer having people trying to interfere with our laws, and we will be on our way to statehood for the District of Columbia. Thank you for your support. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me here once again. It is always my pleasure to be here with the great Racine. I am Brianne Nadeau. I am the Ward 1 Council Member. It has been my privilege for the past four years to work on things like producing affordable housing, supporting our children through education programs, and looking out for our most vulnerable people, whether it's on the Housing Committee, the Health Committee, or as Chair of the Human Services Committee. That includes the work that we've done to look out for our LGBTQ youth experiencing homelessness in our first ever youth plan to end homelessness. And I want to thank all my colleagues up here who helped get that done and to fund it for this fall. It is now in effect. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you very much for having me. Good evening, everybody. My name is Mary Che, and I'm uh, the third term uh, member of Ward 3, uh, the Ward 3 Council member. Uh, and I'm running for re-election because I find this the most rewarding, satisfying job I have ever had or could have because I get to serve the people of uh, my ward and also the district. And I've had some absolutely thrilling moments. And by the way, I want to thank Eleanor Holmes Norton. One of the bills she saved uh, from the uh, pile of uh, Republican resentment um, was my death with dignity law. And so thank you. I have a chance to say that publicly. Um, but um, there have been some extraordinary moments on the council during my service, and I just want to share one with you, and maybe some of you may remember this, and it was the Marriage Equality uh, Act that we passed. And um, when it came my turn, you know, we go down the road, came my turn, I said, um, with respect to this bill, I vote, I do. And, and those moments and, and all the legislation we've been able to pass and the, the service I've been able to give my ward, I, I just can't imagine 
anything that would be more uh, rewarding. So uh, that's why I'm running. Good evening, everyone. Um, um, before I get started, how about a round of applause for the culottes and the band that we just had? My goodness. I don't know that I've ever started off a form with this much energy. Thank you, Racine, for that. Uh, I'm Kenya McDuffie. I represent Ward 5 of the Council of the District of Columbia, and I'm running uh, for re-election because I want to continue to serve all the 80,000 residents of Ward 5 to continue to tackle issues like comprehensive campaign finance reform, which we've tackled at the Council, issues around criminal justice reform, juvenile justice reform, working with the Attorney General, working with my colleagues at the Council, making sure that we fight with our warrior on the Hill, Congressman Eleanor Holmes Norton and Congressman Don Byer, who's been a friend uh, to residents of the District of Columbia, to make sure we are uh, fighting for statehood, and also to work towards the issues that we have made some headway on, like housing, like homelessness, like employment, for the least, the last, and the lost, particularly the folks and our friends in the LGBTQ community. Uh, but more importantly, over the last 20 years, what I've recognized as somebody who's a third generation Washingtonian is that we've come a long way. DC has seen 22 consecutive balanced budget. We've seen surplus after surplus, and the reality is there are thousands of people in the city who've been left behind. And I'm working to continue to fight for those people with my colleagues here on the council to make sure that we are looking to create more equitable city and that the future economic growth of the District of Columbia is more inclusive. So I need your support to be able to do that for four more years in the council. Thank you all. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, thanks, Racine, for the um, opportunity to be here. I'm Alyssa Silverman. I'm one of the at-large council members and one of the independents on the council. I'm running for re-election because I just think D.C. should be the city on the hill. We should be an equitable, fair, just city. I want to, I, I've been a voice for working families in our city who feel like they just don't have a place here anymore. That the city, that taxpayer dollars don't work for them. And so I ask for your support tonight um, to continue that fight so that your taxpayer dollars are used to uplift you, the working people of the city. Thanks so much. Hello, everyone. I've got the distinct pleasure of not only being the first elected attorney general, but my last name is Racine. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I'm going to go home and uh, holler at my mom because I now understand that we've been spelling the name incorrectly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, vote for Racine if you see anything like that uh, on the ballot. Uh, appreciate it, and thank you so much for having me. Uh, you know, I ran and I'm running again uh, to be the Attorney General because I believe that the law can be used uh, in a strategic, intelligent way to enhance the lives of our residents, particularly our most vulnerable residents. And that's what we've done over the last uh, 3.8 uh, years. We focused in regards to uh, juvenile justice and reforming the system to really focus on giving young people who come into the system uh, an opportunity to get some counseling around the trauma uh, that they've experienced. Um, over the last three and a half years plus, we have uh, treated kids to the tune of about 2,300 young people outside of the system with you know, psychological, psychiatric, educational, and other familial counseling in a way that these kids, 80% of them, nearly 2,000, have not been rearrested. And so, um, you know, we care for the vulnerable. We also are absolutely not afraid, of course, to use the tools of a lawyer. And those tools include filing lawsuits uh, to make more equal uh, the playing field, in particular in two areas. Housing, where we've gone after a slumlord after a slumlord after a slumlord and had the most prolific slumlord in the District of Columbia recently agree to exit the District of Columbia and not return for seven years. Lastly, uh, we've worked, I got a second to last, second to lastly, uh, we've worked hard and I've partnered with the council members, uh, certainly Kenyon on juvenile justice, uh, and Alyssa 
on wage theft issues where we've been granted additional authority at the Office of Attorney General to go after unscrupulous businesses that actually steal wages from people who have earned them. And we've brought now five lawsuits, including a very significant one, that, significant one that folks are watching nationally. And the whole goal there is, again, to make this an equal playing field. Lastly, I want you to know that we're not afraid to sue the President of the United States. And so we've got a, um, a winning matter in the uh, District Court in Maryland called the Emoluments Case, um, yeah, where we're uh, trying to make sure we stop uh, the President from not only violating the Constitution of the United States, but profiting uh, from his term in the White House. Nationally, I want to say that uh, we filed suit against the President on his attempt to ban from service LGBTQ trans members, um, and it's those lawsuits that have uh, put him in that place. He needs a check and a balance, and we're happy to provide that. Thank you. Oh, my, thank you. We're going to have y'all share one, the one mic here and the one mic there. So, um, someone finds Zara for me, so I can make sure I'm on time. So, this is our first um, series of questions, and then I'm going to open up to the floor. Some of you are running unopposed, and others are expected to easily win in November. What would you say to people who have become unfazed and thinking about not voting or not voting for you? I'll, I'll start with that, because voting is very, very important. And it's important because it is your opportunity to speak loud and clear to those that are elected and able to do what needs to be done in government to shape the government in accordance to the way you would like to see it in order to help everyone. So voting is really, it's really an opportunity for you to have a big and broad say in what you want government to do in your neighborhood. So that's what I would say, it's a starter. Uh, DC residents of all Americans need to go to the polls because we are trying to get the full vote in the, the, the House and the Senate. And we've got to set that example. You, uh, we've got to give a big vote as well, because we want Trump to see that right where he lives in this city, he has a strong vote against him. So DC residents can send a message that nobody else in the, in the country can send to Trump and to the Republicans. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the only thing that I would add to what uh, my colleagues have said is that when you vote, you vote not only for yourself, you vote for everybody that's like you. The reason that we don't cut Social Security and we do cut education is because old people vote and young people don't. So every time you cast a vote, you cast a vote for every individual that's just like you. And that's why it's important. I've got an, I've got an opponent, but whoever you vote for, please come out and vote. All right, so would you like to add something? We know if you don't vote, you don't count. We also need to make it easier to vote. We should move election days from Tuesdays to Sundays. We should have mail-in ballots. And we should stop these voter suppression laws that keep people from voting. How about that? How about that? I'm with you. Here's my next question. Unlike people who reside in all 50 states, residents of the District of Columbia do not have representation with a vote in Congress. Why is it still important to cast votes for delegates, U.S. representatives, and U.S. Senators. You've just given the reason why. <laughs> because of what you don't have. Uh, and also, I might add, don't have full voting rights, even though, listen to this number. The district residents are number one per capita in taxes paid to support the United States of America. Anybody ought to have the vote. We are paid for it. Uh, and we need to make that point and go out and vote. Another reason to vote is if Democrats take back the House, I cannot assure you that we will definitely get statehood. 
we've got virtually all Democrats on the bill, but I can assure you of this. The last time we were in the majority, and I spent most of my service in the minority, I was able to get a vote on the House floor for the first time in the Committee of the Whole where some bills are in fact voted on. So I have voted on the House floor. I want to at least vote on the House floor and the Committee of the Whole on my way to voting on the House floor as a full member of the House of Representatives. How about that? So let me take it from this back row. This question can be for two or three of you. What would you say to voters who have a general disdain for incumbents and want to vote them all out? Sure. Um, <laughs> let me just uh, say my last name again. Racine. <laughs> no, no, no. No, look. I mean, I think, it's, I think incumbents are fair game, um, you know, to be honest. Uh, and I think it's important uh, that uh, competition uh, comes into play. Uh, that's why I respect, uh, you know, the folks who are not up here right now. They're running for office. They're challenging the incumbents. They've got to win on their ideas. Uh, it's important um, that we have uh, challenges, but it's also important, I would say, from the position of an incumbent, um, that you take a hard look, and perhaps we need to do a better job communicating what we've done during our term. And if you think that people have worked their tail off um, for you, taken on some challenges and maybe some hits and stood up and been honest and have been people of integrity, then I would respectfully suggest that they probably have earned your vote. So I'm pro-incumbents, uh, I'm pro-challengers uh, fighting against incumbents, but I'm also pro-fighting that candidate, whether it's an incumbent or a challenger, who you can trust to do the job. Amen. You know, if I may, can I just quickly answer the previous question? Because my office doesn't get voted for sometimes. I have the most non-votes of anybody in the District of Columbia in terms of an office. But it's important because six jurisdictions have used non-voting senators, and each one of them has become a state. So it's very important to vote for this office because this office works. And by the way, in 12 years, I haven't been paid a penny. So I'm the best bargain in D.C. politics. <laughs> How about that? Racine, I, I certainly wish my last name was Racine tonight. Um, but what I would say is that Trump got elected because people didn't think their voice mattered and that there was any difference. And I think what we have learned in these two years is there's a big difference. Um, so I would ask um, D.C. voters to take a look. Paid family leave. So I have to say I'm probably set apart from everyone in this uh, in this area because I have an election that is very much challenged, as people who are paying attention know. And I support paid family leave. I think it's really important that people have the uh, opportunity, no matter who they are, no matter what they look like, no matter who they love, to have time to spend with their family at the most important moments of their life. And, that's what, and, and so I think um, D.C. voters should take a look. Um, I'm an incumbent, but I have taken hits uh, for paid family leave because I think we're a humane city, we're a compassionate city, and I think people should be able to take care of their loved ones at the most important moments of their life. Amen. All right. Yeah, I think it's, it, it, is, it is easy to, to look at incumbents and say, you know what, they're not working for me. I think the point that was made earlier by Attorney General Racine about the, the need for incumbents to communicate the work that they've done is a very important one. Uh, I, I've been on the council for six years. I represent Ward 5, and I think it's important for folks who are considering me uh, on November 6th to think about the things that I've been able to generate uh, in my record, working with my colleagues on the council to tackle really important issues like comprehensive campaign finance reform, making for so businesses can bundle donations, tackling issues like uh, crime prevention, like the NEAR Act, the Neighborhood Engagement and Chief Results Act, where I worked on everybody on this uh, on the side of, of the forum to make sure that we ushered in a health-based approach to crime prevention and intervention in just the That we recognize that law enforcement is important, but it's also important to make sure that we are embedding uh, credible messengers, people who can interrupt and disrupt the violence into the communities where we're seeing some of the highest rates of crime in the district of Columbia. Making sure that we look at juvenile justice reform with the Attorney General to, to prevent 
uh, kids from being thrown uh, in administrative segregation for long periods of time that has proven is the data that shows that it does not help with their rehabilitation. Focusing on the consequences, but age-appropriate consequences to make sure that kids aren't being shackled when they're ushered into court to appear before judges. Working on issues like ban the box for employment. Tackling issues like ban the box for housing with council member bonds. Making sure that you tackle these very important environmental issues with council member Che and the human service issues on homelessness. If you look at the record that this council, this very progressive council has developed, uh, at least in my tenure over the last six years, I'm proud of that record. And I'm willing to stand and shout from the rooftops the things that we've been able to accomplish. And I would hope that people would look at the comments that have been on the council for the last several years and look at our records and judge us on our records. And I'm willing to go toe-to-toe -to, -toe to anybody to tell them all the wonderful things that we've been able to accomplish over the last several years. So, so I want to thank my colleagues for all the work that we've been able to do. And I hope that you all would look at some of those things and hope be responsible for making sure that I communicate those things more effectively to you all as well. Thank you, uh, Councilmember McDuffie and my, and my colleagues here. It's absolutely true, you know, uh, our uh, district is really a uh, reformist, progressive place. And serving on the council and all the work that we've been able to do, I believe in democracy. I'm a professor of constitutional law. I mean, it's deeply, it's in my DNA. And I think that, you know, we should engage. And it's sort of like a, a job interview with the public. And so we have to, you know, uh, meet that job interview. I didn't even have an opponent in the primary, but I nevertheless put on a campaign. And what? Nothing. We're all right. We're all right. <laughs> Somebody just had a breathe moment. Just breathe. Okay. We're fine. Keep okay. going. In any case, and now I do have an opponent, and that's fine. But as my colleagues have said, I, w I would hope that the residents of uh, Ward 3 would see uh, what we've done during our tenure and what we've been able to bring, in particular, you know, the, the uh, people of my ward in terms of all the things that I've been able to bring. I've modernized all the schools. I've, ha I've put in new libraries, new firehouses, new recreation centers. It's just been, you know, uh, one thing after the other in terms of uh, providing this infrastructure for my ward. But uh, I, I think that we can all stand very proud, and I want my residents to have confidence in me when they vote. Thank you. All right. And this will be our final question. And then we're going to take a picture and we'll wrap this up and we'll go into the second panel. Well, you know, elections are really about your values, right? And ensuring that the people you're voting for share your values. Um, this council, as has already been mentioned, is, is really progressive. And, and every once in a while I hear, well, you know, you're all really progressive. You know, you all vote the same way. You know, what's the difference as long as there's a good, you know, Democrat in there? Well, you know what, it's incredibly important that you look at the leadership of the people who are running as well. And I'm really proud um, to have been the chair of the Human Services Committee and in my first year reformed our emergency homeless system so nobody would be out on the street, reformed our temporary assistance to needy families program so that families would have access to the cash benefits that they need to stay in their homes and to thrive, and also empowered people with disabilities through a reform that creates more rights for all people with disabilities and restores rights for people with developmental disabilities. And those are the kinds of things you get to do when you take on leadership roles. Um, so the longer your council member is there, the more leadership opportunities they have. Don't vote for someone you don't believe in. Don't vote for someone just because they've been there a long time. Vote for someone because they're doing the right thing every day, because they take the hard votes, like we all have to do every day. My most satisfying days are when I'm taking a hard vote or when I'm doing something difficult because I know that I've put my all into it and that I've represented my constituents well. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to take a picture. So let us all get